uh, talking about the activation of a mobile robot through a brain computer interface. Thank you for introducing me. Uh, here is the outline of my presentation. Uh, uh, brain computer interface, or the BCI as they are known, can be viewed uh, as an alternative communication channel for people with or without motor disabilities. They can control from a leg wheelchair to a robotic arm. There are two types of BCIs, invasive and non-invasive. Basically, the main advantage of the non-invasive is that no surgery is needed. So the objective of this work is to develop a non-invasive brain computer interface to control a mobile robot. Most of non-invasive BCIs use uh, an electroencephalograph that shortens EEG to acquire brain, uh, brain wave signals. So for this work, an eight-channel EEG was developed that includes a protection circuit, an instrumental amplifier, a right leg driver, and an amplification circuit, and also an analog to digital convert that sends data to a personal computer. So um, the acquired signals must be pre-processed. For this, uh, a digital filter was used to uh, remove any residual noise from the signal, and also a spatial filter is used to increase the scalp resolution. At this point, uh, feature extraction is made by placing eight electrodes at the frontal, central, and parietal locations of the scalp that are related to the motor and the premotor cortex area for the brain. And these eight signals are then decomposed through a discrete wavelet transform until achieving the principal frequency of the brain waves. Uh, the feature vector uh, is then composed by the energies uh, but of uh, the alpha and beta bands and also the whole EG spectrum levels from the discrete wave to transform the composition. So we have three measures of energies uh, for each one of the eight electrodes that results in a 24 element vector. That fact detection was made only in the training sets and is made by looking the energy signal from the front electrodes at the lower frequency, but uh, was not the, the focus of the work, this work. Well, uh, with the feature vector on hand, we can try to classify some specific mental tasks. Uh, in this, this mental task chosen for this work uh, was the imaginary movement of the user's tongue, that I call the up movement, the imaginary move, movement of the left arm and the right arm, respectively the left movement and right movement, and also the imaginary movement of the feet, that I call the down movement. Uh, when classified, this mental test can be translated to a robot action, like move forward, turn right, turn left, or stop. Um, to classify these mental tasks, uh, three models, uh, three classifiers based on neural networks were evaluated. The first one is an uh, ensemble of uh, multilayer perception neural networks with the driven pattern replication. We have four neural networks and the training protocol was modified, the training set actually, was modified so that each neural network classifies better one pattern. And the, also, uh, the final classification is obtained, combining the outputs from each member by their mean values and choosing the highest, av highest average output. The second model is, uh, I call the modular multinet system. We also have four neural networks, but at this time, each neural network is trained to classify the pattern as belonging or not belonging to its respective group. When more than one neural network classifies the pattern as belonging to its group, uh, the answer is obtained by computing the highest value uh, of the reason between the belongs and the does not belong output from each neural network. So a third model uh, was, was proposed that I call the hierarchical model. And this model is divided in two steps. In the first step, we have three neural networks that will classify the patterns as the right movement, left movement, and a third new pattern that uh, is the up or down movement. And at the second step, if uh, the new pattern up or down movement was pre-classified in the first step, we have a fourth neural network to distinguish between the up or down movement. So uh, these three models were evaluated 
with the 10 sets of uh, 700 mental activities. Uh, I call the mental activity uh, a one second of EG reading. Uh, it's from a single user. And the, from, the, from the 700 mental activities, 400 were used to train, 100 for training validation, and 200 for tests. And you can see the, the results are similar, but the theoretical model reaches um, a higher value of, the, of 6 5 percent of right classifications. So, as you saw, the hit, uh, hit rates are around 6 percent. And so, it's not a good idea to use a single trial to be classified and converted some, in some robot action. So, to solve this problem, a uh, concept of the multiple trials were, were introduced. And in two implementations of this concept were evaluated. The first one is the threshold implementation. We use, we use a modular multinet system to classify the, each trial. And so the grades attributed to each output that corresponds to the four patterns are added to their respective grades in the next trial until a uh, uh, threshold is reached by one pattern. So uh, this threshold uh, depends on the user's ability to carry out some similar trials. And if the number of trials exceeds 15, uh, the comment is uh, declared unclear, so in no robot action is taken. The second implementation uh, is the statistical implementation. Uh, the theoretical model is used, and the, uh, the occurrence of each one is evaluated after a predefined minimal number of trials. And if the pattern reaches a, re a rate of occurrence at least uh, two times um, its intrinsic probability, probability, then it's chosen to convert in some robot action. Uh, one more time, the, if the number of trials exceeds 15, uh, the comment is, is declared as unclear. So, uh, to apply the, the system to a robot, the, these four patterns are, are translated in robot functions. The right movement is translated in, in uh, makes the robot turn 30 degrees to the right. The left movement makes the robot turn 30 degrees to the left. The up movement makes the robot move forward uh, half a meter, and the down movement makes the robot stop. So uh, here we can see the, the whole system. The user wearing the laptop cap. We have the radio frequency transmitter that sends the command to the robot. You have the, all the EG system here, it's that size, and uh, a personal computer that processes the, the whole system. So, uh, the evaluation of the whole system uh, was made asking the user to perform a hundred times each mental activity while looking at the robot. And you can see that the statistical implementation reached a higher number of successful performance <coughs> of nine, uh, 91%. It's important to see that the wrong comments is only 1.55% during the, the concept of unclear comments. So, the conclusions. Uh, the alpha and beta bands represent suitable the behavior of EEG signals in the frequency time domain during imaginary motor functions. That is also known for uh, who studies uh, this area. Uh, the proposed methods for not only result in a high rate, hit rate of successful comments, but also greatly decrease the number of wrong comments through their concept of unclear comments when no action is taken. Uh, each comment was identified in average uh, after five trials. And this could be decreased by a user's ability, uh, reducing the minimum trial period. And also the, the personal computer will be replaced by a dedicated electronic uh, and the, the, cost, the cost of the, the whole system and trying to saving the, the cap will be about $200. So that's it. Uh, thank you.